Oh, the UConn students just got back from spring break and they're already playing hooky. Lined up outside all day to get front row seats as the Huskies and Nika Mule take on the Baylor Bears for a spot in the Sweet 16. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. And they are fighting for a spot in Seattle. In the Sweet 16, our clash of champions, Baylor with three national titles, UConn with 11 of them. And the winner advances from Gamble Pavilion here in stores, out to the West Coast and a date with the Ohio State University. The top seed in the bracket, Virginia Tech, also will be out west with Tennessee. Hi, everybody, and welcome inside Gamble Pavilion. I'm Beth Mullins, along with Christy thomas Scuddy, and a sellout crowd getting set for Baylor and UConn. And the other night in the first round, the front line, fantastic for the Huskies. Absolutely. Gino Oriema challenged his bigs and said, we can only go as far as you'll take us. Message received. Aaliyah Edwards was dynamic, 28 points, an efficient 13 of 15, blow bys in transition, sealed that paint, used her body extremely well. And the biggest thing for Aaliyah Edwards tonight, stay on the floor and just keep on keeping on because when she has let up at all, Dorka Uhas has picked up the slack. You see the shot chart here, the red dots, the three misses, but more importantly, the seven makes, and you see where she got her shots deep in the paint. For Baylor to have a chance, they got to protect the paint and hit some more threes. 14 of 28 from deep against Alabama on Saturday, led by Jamie Asbury and Sarah Andrews, who combined for 11 of those 14. These dynamic playmakers have to come up big for the Bears here this evening for them to get a have a chance. That was a new school record in the postseason for Asbury and the Bears as a unit from downtown and it must start right now. They were trailing by 18 points in the first quarter on Saturday and managed to rally against Alabama. Probably won't be able to pull that off again tonight in hostile territory against the two seed Huskies and Gino Ariema, 30 win season for the 26th time. quest to keep their streak alive of 14 straight trips to the final four and the next step here this evening home whites for the huskies road greens for the bears backdoor az fudd and has the shot blocked by sarah andrews as we check out tonight's starting lineups brought to you by capital one Caitlin bickle in the middle has to stay out of early foul trouble she is their last link to their 2019 National Championship squad. And the Husky starting five, we've already called AZ Fudd's name. And we'll mention Lou Lopez Seneschal as well. She's fouled on the drive. She is also their top outside shooter. Well, Beth, for Baylor, a really active defense. And you've seen two plays by UConn, two backdoor cuts. This time, Lou Lopez Seneschal able to get to the free throw line. The grad transfer from Fairfield played in the NCAA tournament a year ago with Fairfield and now with Connecticut, originally from France. All Big East performer and has become a local fan favorite because who wouldn't love to shout out <laughs> Lucan as much as possible. Nice pocket pass and Bella Fauleroy missed the layup. They have two outstanding freshmen, Fauleroy and Little Page Bugs will see come in off the bench. And right away, they establish Aaliyah Edwards, who hit her first 10 shots on Saturday. There you Beth UConn spent a lot of time on the screen on the ball defense here. That first time, they were very lucky to have the missed shot. They've got to clean that up. Pomeroy faces up and knocks it down from the short corner. Bella, the rookie out of Springfield, Missouri, where she was the state's player of the year. 
Nika Mule with the blow by off the dribble and missed the layup. Andrews steps behind the screen, a little off. Baylor won't mind a torrid pace. That was actually when they were at their best in the second half against Alabama Saturday. And they get the turnover here. When Nikki Collins said, we're at our best when we push, but we also don't want to have to go against the half-court defense of UConn. But if you're a Bears fan, you've got to be excited at the shots that you've been able to create so far in this game. Bella rattles in another one. And they've settled down nicely to tie it up. Dorka Uhas. And now AZ Fudd. Just her fifth game back from what has essentially been a season-long injury. Return to play in the Big East Tournament. Three-pointers good from Jamie Asbury, the grad student from Tulsa and Baylor on a 7-0 run. I think Asbury just loves shooting Karen Gamble. She has been on fire in both games, but her defense is going to be just as important here this evening. And she gets a strip, so a couple of early takeaways for the Bears. Pomeroy. And Edward, and, uh, Edwards has the rebound. Coming off of her career high 28 point performance on Saturday. The lob inside and the end one for Dorka. Well, we can talk about Edwards down low, but this is where you get single coverage because Dorka Uhas can also post up, uses her body to shield the defender, tremendous hands as she holds off the defense to score. 63% free throw shooter is Uhas. Had the double-double with six assists as well on Saturday. As they were to beat, uh, able to beat Vermont in their first round win. Off the ball fake, and the triple knockdown. And a whistle as the officials get together. Uh, looks like Lopez Seneschal took a knock to the face. And we'll we will have a review. And pay attention here to Lou Lopez Seneschal, who is being defended, or who's defending Asbury. And so as she comes across the paint, you see her just kind of push Based off on there. Face on review for a possible unobserved intentional foul. So while they start the review, we'll take the break. Baylor with the early lead over Connecticut. So they went to a review and they determined that it was an intentional foul and an elbow to the face called against Bella Fowleroy, or excuse me, against Jamie Asbury. to the face of uh, Lou Lopez Seneschal. Well, let's turn to Protect This House, presented by Under Armour. And this is how good Connecticut has been at home in the postseason. 51 and three all time in NCAA tournament games here in Gamble, including 49 straight wins. They have not lost in this house since 1993. I think these sellout crowds may have some impact on that record. Could be. It is loud in here, and it is rowdy. Well, and in the NCAA tournament, you earn the right to stay at home if you are one of those te 16 teams that have had the best regular season and earned the right to host. And that's how good they've been for how long here at Connecticut, as AZ Fudd will take the two free throws. one of two and it would have been the Huskies possession anyways the Asbury three does count after as that play rolled on and then they went to a review after the play was complete 
problem for the Huskies early, taking care of the basketball. They've turned it over twice in their last four trips up the floor. Beth, and this is not new for the Huskies this season. To me, this is the Achilles heel that could keep them from returning to a Final Four. AZ Fudd, who was a bit off the mark on Saturday, knocks down an early three to boost her confidence. And Fudd is a reason they have a good chance of getting back to the Final Four. Edwards drops it off for Bickle. Every pass being deflected. It ricochets out to Owens. And a nice play by Fauntleroy to keep the play alive and find Jaden. Now out to Nika Mule, third in the country in assists this year. She had 10 on Saturday. Aaliyah Edwards misses mid-range. And you can see that's a shot Baylor's willing to give up to protect the paint on the curls of UConn's actions. Bickle slips the screen. Andrews, just enough space to get it off. And now Muir will push. The junior from Croatia set a new single season assist record here, breaking Sue Bird's old record. Looking for one to Dorka, doesn't get it. But able to crash, same spot, not the same result. That's going to be foul on Lopez Seneschal trying to run through the screen. Her first. It's a three-point Baylor lead. 4.54 to go. It was a knee injury back in December that sidelined AZ Fudge. She missed 22 games, and this was part of her rehab, Christy. Absolutely. Andrea Hooty the head strength and conditioning coach for the basketball team worked with the Institute of Sports Medicine here at UConn. Here you see an asymmetrical treadmill, which basically they were teaching AZ Foot how to retrain her gait to make sure that she wasn't putting more emphasis on the, what we're gonna say, the good leg. And this was a gradual process to get her back. And as we can see, she's ready and raring to go here in the NCAA tournament. She came back briefly in January and tweaked it again and then it was 32 minutes of play in three months until she was finally ready to go in the Big East tournament a couple of weekends ago. And you see the brace she's wearing. She's defending way out in top, number 35 in white. Foul on Baylor and Dariana Littlepage Bugs, their prize freshman. And the Big 12 Freshman of the Year for Nikki Collin, seeking the first Sweet 16 appearance of her brief career, second season after taking over for Kim Mulkey when Kim moved on to LSU. Fudd, a couple of buckets here in the first quarter for AZ. So important for the psyche of Connecticut. They feel whole again with her back in the lineup. And Mule gets the steal. Three on two, looking for Fudd. Or dragged a foot and gonna be called for the travel. Well, Beth, you brought up them feeling whole and we talked to Gino Oriema and we see here about that today. And he said, I think we just put so much pressure on ourselves to score. And now with AZ back, everyone's just relaxed. It spreads the floor. And I said, who particularly is this helping? And he said immediately, Nika Mule. Gino will celebrate his 69th birthday later this week. He's hoping to do it out in Seattle. That's where the winner of this one will go to face Ohio State in the Sweet 16. Keep on switching these on-ball screens. Caitlin Bickle, no. Offensive rebound, little page bugs. Andrews tries from downtown, and Dork has got it. They are fronting the post, and Mule goes over the top to Edwards. You've got to get help side there if you're Baylor. That was such a long lob pass. Someone should have been there in time. The steal for Mule. She'll take it coast to coast and a foul. And now UConn turning up its defensive pressure. Oh. 
At the start of the Big East tournament, it was the first time they had 10 healthy bodies in these last two games. We've seen a true look like the old UConn where they have picked up the defensive intensity. Yep, and Caroline Ducharme checks into the game. She's the other one that has been battling through injuries and now is back. Well, the NCAA Women's Championship continues this week with the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight games all the way up to the National Championship Sunday, April 2nd. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Of course, every game, every minute on the ESPN networks. Mule gets one of two. Huskies up a couple. Jana Van Geitenbeek out there now on the floor for Baylor. Here's Owens, got it. Boy, they are really feeling it from downtown after their big night on Saturday when they dropped a school record 14. Fudd, short. Four triples already in the corner for Baylor. And Geitenbeek from deep. She nails it. What a turnaround from the first quarter Saturday to the first quarter tonight. Totally different Baylor team. You see the confidence just continue to rise. And it's great offensive execution right now by Baylor. They're exploiting some of these switches. The bigs aren't getting out far enough. And some turnover issues. Fourth of the quarter for UConn. We've talked about the hot start from three, and they just picked up from Saturday night. Now 50% in this game, and why settle for twos if you're going to shoot that well from three? I'm going to get a foul on Yule, I think, here, running through the screener. And that will be the first on Nika. The speed of the Baylor guards is coming into play here. They've been forcing everyone on those switches to chase them off a single double baseline screens and the UConn players have not been there consistently on the catch yet approaching the final two minutes of this first quarter in our clash of champions UConn and Baylor have both hoisted the trophy on more than one occasion Andrews off the bounce long rebound and they'll get another go at it. Bickle settles him down. Bickle's got the mismatch. The double team comes. She finds Bugs. Nice assist for Bickle. Well, I've said this about Caitlin Bickle. She is a point guard in a big body. And you just saw her, that entire possession, from the offensive rebound to the assist, own that possession for the Bears. 8-0 run, Baylor. Ducharme kicks it back out top. Dorka's got it for three. <laughs> On the switch, Pickle. Again, the double comes from Mule. Turns her back away. Andrew's good off the bounce. And then the turnover. Caitlin Biggle feels the double come and then looks low. I love that she didn't kick out. She knew where the double came from. She knew where to deliver the pass for that assist. Boy, it's a win for her already. Staying out of foul trouble early and making key contributions. Edwards tied up. Possession arrow to Baylor. Good dig down for Andrews. The defense for Baylor so far has been really, really good. W well scouted. They know the plays. They've been in the right place at the right time more often than not. 
McElroy. Another one, sixth triple of the first quarter for Baylor. And the strip. Fomeroy going to take it, and Edwards who swats it. And that'll do it for the first quarter. Fantastic start for the Bears on the road from downtown. Baylor's been executing at a high level on both ends, but especially on offense. A little screen the screener action. Fauntleroy gets the feet set. Lead for Baylor after one. Congratulations to Ohio State, Tennessee, Louisville, all winners today. And so are the Villanova Wildcats. And Maddie Segrist continues her fabulous season. 31 points today. So that's 66 in the first two for Maddie. And Villanova has a date possibly with uh, Indiana or Miami in the next round. They will be in Greenville with LSU and Utah. So that, there's, there's a lot of uh, people that can score in that one. <laughs> Angel Reese had the 2020 game, and uh, Alyssa Peely also, I think, has 60 points through the first two games. I'm eager to see the defensive schemes against those three. I mean, just prolific scores. Congratulations, too, to Coach Yo and Ole Miss, the stunner last night as the Rebels knocked out the top seed, Stanford. And that is the second personal foul on Nika Mule. So she has two, as does Jamie Asbury. Two fouls for Baylor. Asbury is out. Mule is staying. And o Owens also, Jaden Owens with two fouls. Well, this is one thing Nika, Nika Mule is used to when UConn was so low on numbers. Gino would ride his players when they had two, sometimes three fouls in the first half. So we're not seeing any substitution going to the bent, going to the table right now. Extended minutes uh, for Jana Van Geitenbeek, the transfer from Stanford. Number four in green for Baylor. Here she is defending on Mule. Defending on Mule. Baylor on this end has not allowed UConn to establish its front line, and there she is, right on cue, Aaliyah Edwards, 15-footer. Well, for UConn, I think the bigs are going to have to make that shot because you see defensively they're trying to protect the paint. Aubrey Griffin also out there, 44 and white for Connecticut. Playing through some back spasms this postseason. Andrew short-armed it. Ducharme finds the outlet. Kick out. Caroline Ducharme for three. Sophomore out of Milton, Mass. And a two time Massachusetts player of the year in high school. Pass and a turnover. Mule waits for Edwards to establish. And a timeout, Baylor, as Connecticut comes roaring back to open up the second quarter and grab the lead. The defense is picked up, but I think it's feeding off the offense. Carol Caroline Ducharme comes down, screams to Edwards to get her the ball. UConn on a 7-0 run. Oh, well, I think you're teasing the Indiana Hoosiers right now. It's a it's a two point game in the fourth quarter with Miami and the winner of that one will uh, fill out. You see over there on the left, we've highlighted where it is on your bracket. It's upper right Greenville on Friday night. Three spots are filled Villanova, LSU and Utah. That is the potent scorer bracket. And we got a good one here in stores. 25-24 UConn on a 7-0 run after they were trailing at the end of the first quarter. 
for just the second time in their NCAA tournament history in this building, in Gamble Pavilion. And now Baylor's got to be careful that this doesn't uh, build into, you know, what we've seen over the years, Scuddy. It gets into a 15 or 20-0 run on you. Well, I agree with Rebecca about the turnovers for UConn, but what I saw to start this quarter was the defensive intensity just ratcheted up a couple of levels. That time, though, very fortunate that Baylor didn't make them pay for a slow switch out. Ducharme. Running five around the perimeter to keep the lane open right now. Fudd probes. Edwards finishes. And that started with the initial dribble penetration by UConn. Forced rotations for, by Baylor. No one ever found Edwards on the weak side. Nine unanswered. Andrews ends that. Junior out of Irving, Texas, and MacArthur High School. Same prep that produced Odyssey Sims and Alexis Jones for Baylor. And Nikki Collin went back to her bench and got her two starting guards back in after that UConn run. Oh, Ducharme, the streaky shooter. She's hit a couple of buckets here. Wide open look for Asbury. They lost her on the backside. Edwards faces up on Bickle and uses the backboard to score. Give Nick and Mule credit for that. She knew that Edwards had one on one in the post and was patient and got her big the ball. Nico with the rebound. Connecticut has hit its first six shots to open up this second quarter. Cleaned up by Griffin. And it was Edwards fighting inside to keep the ball alive. Owens, nice crossover, and hits it. Count the basket, and an offensive foul on the screen on Bickle. That will be her first. Well, Nikki Collins arguing about this, but watching it live, I thought it was definitely a push off by Bickle. You see her getting in at the top of the screen into Edwards and just pushing off a little bit of flopping too by Edwards. I, I, second review, I'll say a little bit of flopping, but never extend that arm. That's what the officials will see. I think I'd go with Nikki on that one. That, that appeared to be behind the play a little bit. Of course, she's also arguing that there should have been a call for her down at this end after the collision. The made basket by Baylor is under review. The ball must be released prior to the illegal contact in order for it to count. My Forsberg, along with uh, Natasha Kamey and Eric Koch, are officials, so they are going to look to make sure that the ball was out of the hands of the shooter when the foul was called. That looks like that was before the shot got off. After review, the illegal contact occurred prior to the release of the successful basket. Baylor's field goal attempt will be nullified. Wow, that is, uh, that is two points off the board for Baylor and a foul on Bickle. See if anything else comes to this. Uh, Nikki Collin fighting for her team in hostile territory. Nikki Collin is an extremely brilliant coach. The X and O's, no question about it. She's got it. She's also a very passionate coach, and I think her team definitely feeds off her. 
Lopez Seneschal off glass, rips it up and in. 17 to two run this quarter for the Huskies as Maya Moore cheers on her school. They swing it around, Andrews in the corner. Bangs in a three. Now they need some stops on this end. The Huskies have hit eight of their nine shots through the first five and a half minutes. I just thought the offense for the Huskies moving at a better pace than it was in that first quarter. Juhas working on the freshman, goes to the left hand. Nine for 10 here in the second quarter. Picked off, too much traffic there. Here's Fudd. AZ Fudd. No. Bugs short on the shot. Baylor, meanwhile, just two of seven this quarter. Some of it's been quick shots, and as we saw in that last attempt, no one anywhere near the paint when that shot hit the rim, so they're not even getting second chance opportunities. And just the one turnover this quarter for the Huskies. Bugs has it. off the bounce. Uses her body well to draw the foul on Juhas. Two bigs for UConn just going to work. This time Dorka Juhas uses her body so well to feel the defender. And I think if Little Page Bucks is going to get matched up on Dorka Juhas down low, Baylor's going to have to send a double. And this will be the first free throw of the night coming up for Baylor. Eighty-one percent for Caitlin. Grad student out of Cave Creek, Arizona, in her first year as a starter. No one's able to rebound the miss. Number three to go in the half. Pomeroy with another offensive rebound, and she'll go to the line. So much easier to offensive rebound as a team when you're prepared for shots. We're seeing now from the free throw line on the miss, they were prepared. They got the second chance opportunity. That time, Fontenoy working hard to extend this play. Ten points, four rebounds in the Alabama win a couple of nights ago. Bella able to hit the first. It's a five-point game. You see the difference uh, here in the second quarter for the Huskies offensively. 75% from the floor. Lopez Seneschal, it ends up with Fudd. That won't go. And Dorka with the pick. Held ball, and it will go to Baylor. And I think they've just worn the Baylor bench. And they have. But Beth, can we just marvel for a moment? That was the 6-5 post player who got up in transition defense and forced that turnover. Jump ball going back to Baylor. That probably most likely save two points because Baylor was looking to run. Two, 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 two. 
Andrews to Bickle. Edwards able to bother, and then a foul on Aaliyah. And that will be her second. So good aggressive play from the Bears here in the last couple of minutes. And they have crept their way right back into it. Looks like they'll inbound here underneath with two minutes to go. Next foul would put the Bears on the line. Pickle. Fudd. Tough pass into traffic. Gino is screaming at her, hey, she's taller than everybody. Shoot it up top to her. Andrews, no. Here's Mule, six assists here in the first half for UConn. They've outscored Baylor 19 to 8 in the second quarter. Mule to the left hand. Bickle was able to bother, and Nika was out of bounds. It seems at times, especially we've seen the guards get to the rim but not finish, they're almost sped up because of how quick the perimeter players for Baylor are defensively. They're trying to be faster than them. I would love to see a little bit of change of pace. Final minute of the half. Wide open look for Owens. Got it. That's her third of the first half and the eighth for Baylor. And they've scored six in a row. Edwards, offensive foul, and that's her third. We asked Nikki Collin about matchups, and her biggest decision was who to put Caitlin Bickle on because she believed she could draw some fouls on the bigs of UConn. That time, sliding her feet and getting the call for Edwards' third of the half. Edwards sits with the 12 points and the three fouls. And shot clock, clock basically out of play here. Gets the mismatch. Steps back. Four seconds for UConn. Mule, good if it goes. Got it! Beth, every good point guard has an internal clock. Nika Mule sneaks the rug. Knows where she goes. Three point field goal. Knows where she is, though, and lets it fly. That looked good to me. Look at the reaction from the students behind the, the board basket. Mm -hmm. And the three-pointer is confirmed. to 35 at the half UConn with the lead over Baylor for a spot in the Sweet 16 as we send it back to L in the studio second half here in stores the winner gets a spot in the Sweet 16 against Ohio State in Seattle next weekend I'm Beth Mullins along with Christy Thomas Scuddy and it's UConn by five as we get set to start this third quarter. And our thrilling drive is brought to you by Nissan. Well, UConn's bigs have been like an armada in the paint today. 20 of the team's 40 points have come in the paint. The bigs have done a great job of positioning themselves for lobs, for seals, and they've been able to finish. UConn's bigs have shown up in a big way. I really don't believe Baylor can defend them one-on-one -on -one because you see the spacing because of the shooters for UConn. The floor is spread. Great job by the perimeter players of UConn to feed the post.
Baylor took the first quarter. Connecticut came back to win that second quarter. And now 20 minutes to go for a spot in the Sweet 16. Aliyah Edwards will start the second half with three fouls. For Baylor, their story, just like it was Saturday night in the Alabama win, lights out from beyond the arc in that first half. Easy FUD, comes off the screen, short on the shot, rebounded by Sarah Andrews. Eight triples for Baylor in that first half from five different shooters. Twice as many threes as they had twos. The best five quarters of action for Baylor here at Gamble Arena. 22 made threes. How many more can they add to that here in the second half? Dickel. Mule was right there in her face. Good defensive pressure for Connecticut by the two-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. But it's a look from three. That won't go. And Dorka tried to tip it out to a teammate. Ends up with Baylor. Two-man game. Owens and Pickle. And Caitlin muscles that up and in. the range there and AZ Fudd with the deuce. Comes the horns action for Baylor. Switch by Yukon to nothing doing for Owens. Andrews, baseline. And throws it in the press row. Look at that. 25% of the offense for Baylor on the season it comes from screen on the ball offense. You see Bickle defended by Fudd there. They switch. Fudd doesn't get around, doesn't outstep the roll. That's how Bickle got that clean look at the rim. Trying to pass it inside to Ducharme, and they turn it over. It's the two seed and the seven seed here in Gamble Pavilion, and no seed apparently is safe in this year's tournament. Another number one has gone down tonight. Nine seed Miami in the Greenville Regional Two, a stunner over Indiana just moments ago. They win it by two. And Indiana and Stanford are bounced. It's the first time since 1998 that two number one seeds do not advance into the second weekend. And a whistle and a foul. And that is the fourth on Aaliyah Edwards early in this third quarter. I have to wonder if that was part of the game plan coming out of halftime by Nikki Collin because we saw the screen on the ball and the roll by Bickle. We've seen them turn the corner, try to get to the rim to try to get Aaliyah Edwards to pick up that fourth. Major development here at Gamble as Edwards will have to sit. Asbury misses on the first. And gets the second. Who does Yukon turn to now to pick up some of the slack? It's Duhas. The 6'5 grad student from Hungary. It's not a bad plan B if you're a Yukon Husky fan. Lob inside, Fonleroy, tough catch, able to grab or miss. Andrews off the side of the backboard there. Nika Mule fouled. 
That'll be two on Bella. done a good job of keeping Connecticut off the offensive glass tonight. And the response at the other end for three. Jamie Asbury with another one. Ninth of the night for Baylor. And the steal by Asbury. And timeout Connecticut as the Bears have come roaring back and it's a one point game. Well, Baylor's defense has been on point for the better part of this game. This time, the steal and the score by Jamie Asbury. Baylor very much in this game. Two one seeds bounced, Indiana and Stanford. That leaves a one seed, Virginia Tech. They will be in the region with the winner of this one out in Seattle. And of course, the overall one seed, undefeated South Carolina. That has looked impressive in the postseason so far as Fudd knocks one down. And the Gamecocks of South Carolina making a run at a second consecutive national championship and trying to become just the fifth program to win a title undefeated. These two have done it, UConn, Baylor, of course, Tennessee, and then the very first to do it, the Texas Longhorns of Jody Conrad. And that will be the third foul on Nika Mule. So she's got three, and Aaliyah Edwards has four for Connecticut. South Carolina, by the way, awaiting the winner of the last game tonight, Oklahoma and UCLA. That's who they will face in the Sweet 16 with Notre Dame and Maryland, the other two teams in that Greenville 1 region. Owens, got it. Double digit triples for the second game in a row and they average only six per game all season. Backdoor cut, Fudd. Assist, Dorka. Six points for Fudd in the first half already. Six points in this quarter as well. Owens blocked. Griffin got a piece of it. Connecticut will push. Fudd feeling her oats. Fourteen for Easy. Andrews unattended. Mule looking for Fudd. She's got the hot hand. Newhouse trying to go to work in the paint off. Barrett's got it and foul. For Newhouse sprints the fur post, splits the floor, first post down, step in, uses the body to screen off the defender. And a little bit of luck off the glass as well. Been a rain in threes for the Baylor Bears, 10 of them on the night. They've been doing their scoring outside, UConn doing theirs inside. And the Huskies with a six point lead, 4.14 to go in the third. And again, for the second game in a row, more threes than deuces from the Bears. Trying to win here on UConn's home floor, where since 2006 in the NCAA tournament, the Huskies have won 49 straight tournament games while playing in the Northeast. They haven't lost since Duke came in here and beat them in Bridgeport in 2006. That's because they've been so good for so long, they keep earning number one and number two seeds and get the right to host and stay close. Can Baylor change all that tonight? 
Pickle driving, trying to draw that fourth foul on Nika Mule, and she had no part of it. Shot clock's down to five. Oh, my goodness! Owens, who had lost the handle, just flipped that one up towards the rim, and it goes. She gave the Michael Jordan shrug, because even she knew that she wasn't banking on that one going in. Off the takeaway. Oh, Asbury had a moment to jack it and lost it. She'll try the drive instead, and the result is an empty possession. No Aaliyah Andrews for Connecticut, sitting with four fouls. Edwards, excuse me. Juhans, double team come. She's got to kick it out. Fudd pulls up 15 footer, no. Offensive rebound. Fudd will try again, quick trigger. And another offensive rebound for Griffin. Griffin just does so many little things. She's always the first person sprinting down the floor to force defenses to fan out. Offensive rebounds, defense, just that energy player for the Huskies. Got a whistle and a foul off the ball. And that'll be the second on Bugs. Jay Nolan's nose, shot clock's going down, fumbles it, gathers it back, flings it up. And this is when you know it's your night. And that was a two, by the way. This one is a three for now, but the official signal that they want to look at it at the next stoppage of play. UConn continues to switch those screen on balls. Mule. Good rim run from Griffin. Great effort by Griffin, but even better court vision by Nika Mule. And it's a danger zone for Baylor. Timeout Bears. 2.04 to go in the quarter. Nika Mule now with 10 assists. And this is what you do if you're a point guard. Head is up. And you find Griffin run the floor. UConn on an 11 2 run. Sold out crowd tonight, Gamble Pavilion. The two seed UConn, the seven seed Baylor in the Seattle three regional. Remember, it's new this year. Two brackets in Greenville, two brackets in Seattle. And the winner of this one will join. Tennessee, Virginia Tech, and a Sweet 16 matchup with The Ohio State University. And they've looked at the FUD 3, and I think they will keep it a FUD 3. So AZ now with 17 points. And this is just great footwork by FUD. Knows that she wants a 3, so you even see her step back to get into that shot. And this is what I'm seeing, is just you're seeing that leg strength grow and grow with each game that she has played since she came back. Owens. New House with the rebound, her sixth. Mule, a streaking Lou. Griffin, another offensive board. That's her third in the last couple minutes. Beth, if it's a streaking Lou, then it's a high flying Griffin. Lou Lopez and Ashaw can't finish in transition. No worries. Aubrey Griffin there, skying high to keep the play alive for the Huskies. Third foul on Asbury. Fudd. Easy fun, and it's a 12-point lead. Muir, Griffin. Good play defensively by Asbury. Griffin missed the land.
final minute of the third quarter. Pickles. And a turnover to Connecticut. Beth, it's been all AZ fight here in the third quarter for the Huskies. You see the numbers in her first three games back since the injury. Only averaging basically eight points a game and 23%. She has 14 points in this quarter alone here this evening. I think it might be safe to say AZ Fudd is back. Well, her parents leading the cheers right now. They are so thrilled to see her back out on the floor and doing what she does best. Mule. Fun off the bounce. Fun's outscoring Baylor here in the third quarter. Bugs gets a bucket and one more chance. All eyes on number 35 in white. But she did everything else right in that third quarter for the Huskies. Well, because AZ Fudd started him knocking him down from deep. She got a little bit of a cushion off the drive. Tremendous touch. AZ Fudd is back. They'll take on Ohio State next Saturday. The top seed Virginia Tech and the four seed Tennessee also have advanced for games on Saturday out west. The Elite Eight would then be Monday night. Big third quarter for Fudd. She outscored Baylor with 16 points in that third quarter. Beth, it was the variety of ways that she scored, which reminded me of the way she was playing back in November, early December, before the initial injury. Doing it off the bounce, the jump shot, as well as the three. And she did it without Aaliyah Edwards, who still sits with four personal fouls, so it's a shorter lineup out there for Connecticut. Can Baylor shoot their way back into it? Bugs. That won't go, and Mule comes out with it. Nika is one assist away from tying Sue Bird's NCAA tournament single game record. She's got 10 so far tonight. Ducharme back to Dorka. Blocked out of bounds, got six on the shot clock. Twice now, the perimeter players for Baylor have not given up on plays and been able to get the blocks. Fudd, short. And Guyton beat for three. Good leg, so important. As we head into the fourth quarter on those long shots, Ducharme runs to the rim. Assists for Lou. Owens, good drop off. Little Paige Bugs protects with the rim. We talked about Griffin's athletic ability, but Little Paige Bugs is just as athletic, so explosive off the floor. I'm surprised Baylor's going under those dribble handoffs and on-ball screens on FUD right now, as hot as she is. Well, you got three good three-point shooters on the floor for Connecticut. They turn it over there. Really able to spread the floor out. Lucan, Lopez in a shawl, running the floor in transition and sees the streaking Ducharme for the two. Sarah Andrews comes back on the floor. Both sides now going with a little smaller lineups. Hopper on mid-range. 
Dork has got another rebound. That's her seventh to go with 11 points. Owens and Asbury, a combined 24 for the Bears tonight. Eight minutes to go. Ducharme spots up. Got it. Four different players with a triple for Connecticut. Asbury missed little John, little Paige Bugs on that slip. Good contest on the shot. Mule to Fudd. Good box out for Bugs. Does Baylor have one more push in them? They rallied from an 18-point deficit on Saturday to win. They find themselves again down double figures. Look at Colin Watt and her team to play with better pace right now. Boy, Juhas is able to contest everything on these dribble drives. You can't say enough about the versatility of Juhas' skill set. All this switching, and Baylor can't exploit the 6'5 post player. Timeout for Connecticut. They want to get Edwards back onto the floor, and she will be out there when we return to Gamble Pavilion. Second round coverage of the NCAA championships. Thank you very much, SVP. Looking forward to that. After we wrap things up here at Gamble, and a big night for AZ Fudd, 22 points. And Aaliyah Edwards is back out onto the floor for Connecticut. And here she is with a touch, playing with four fouls. Fudd, her best game back since returning from the injury just a couple weeks ago, a knee injury that had her out much of the season. Roy. Good. Can the three ball get him back in it? That is number 11 for Baylor. Well, Baylor has shown one thing, and that's resolve. Last three games, they've been down by as much as 18, and they always find a way to get back in it. That's 25 triples in the last five quarters for the Bears. Nice play. Lopez Seneschal to Edwards. The loose scoring might be down a little bit tonight, but she's still impacting the offense. Love the wraparound pass to Edwards. That's tremendous court vision by the senior. Twenty-one assists on twenty-nine buckets for Connecticut. Sixteen on twenty for Baylor. We've seen some outstanding passing tonight. Three-point play for Edwards. Under six minutes to go. One thing if you're Baylor, you've got to have a little bit better pace to the offense right now. Only so many possessions left for you on the offensive end. You've got to make them count right now. Foul going to be on Ducharme before the shot. Hey, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues. Sweet 16 coverage. On Thursday, on TBS and CBS, for more information, go to NCAA.com. Of course, here at UConn, they're hoping for the double. Get both teams to the Final Four. Connecticut trying to get there for the 50th year in a row. I, I don't know if that's more significant or the fact that a win tonight gets them to the Sweet 16 for the 29th year in a row with those 11 national championships. Both are utterly remarkable. Ducharme Edwards. And they're starting to carve it up now. You gotta wonder if there's some fatigue now for Baylor because the rotations defensively have not been there this second half consistently. That's sweet 16 trips every year since 1993.
And of course, the, the other story is they will be heading west. Christy, they're going to go to Seattle. They've been so good for so long and earned the right to stay close to home. But that changes with the new format, and they will be going out to Seattle. It will be just their third NCAA tournament trip to the Pacific time zone. Last time they were out there in 2007, they lost in the Elite Eight to Fresno, or excuse me, to LSU in Fresno. Owens had to hoist that up. Another good defensive set for UConn. But Doriana telling Nika Mules, pull it out. He wants to work some clock here. Offensive foul off the ball. The screen being set by Griffin first. I love the intensity of Nika Mule right now. She went to Griffin and said, let's go. She knows mentally it's just as important as anything physically that UConn is going to do right now down the stretch. Final four minutes and an offensive foul, the same thing at the other end. Well, we, we thought, you know, throughout the regular season, kind of South Carolina was here, and then everybody else, I, I don't think you were really scared to go anywhere to play anybody. You, Thought you'd have a shot if you got the right break in your bracket for this NCAA tournament. Of course, South Carolina still the team to beat. Undefeated. But it has been a lot of fun to watch. Two number one seeds have already been knocked out. Mule for three, no. And teams have been able to win on the road as we've seen more parity around the tournament. Three ball is good. Jamie Asbury. But to your point, I think we're seeing the fifth year seniors, that extra COVID year. We're seeing more experience on the floor, which has kind of leveled the playing field a wee yeah. bit. But back to your point about South Carolina, absolutely. We've seen flaws in all the top teams where I think Connecticut, I'm mean, sorry, where I think South Carolina has an advantage is that 35 points off the bench. Yeah. Edwards able to clean it up. 17 now for Aaliyah. We got four SEC teams, four ACC teams that have advanced to the Sweet 16. Three from the Big Ten. And Edwards will check out. Perhaps for the final time. UConn looking to become the second Big East team to move on. Where I'll say I like UConn right now is that there's a versatility of the way they're scoring right now, the inside out balance. And we know that they can defend and they can definitely rebound. Terrific atmosphere, by the way. Sellout crowd tonight. Making a lot of noise. Lou raining down on Lopez Seneschal after the triple. Trailed after the first quarter tonight. All Huskies since. Lou Lopez Seneschal has become a crowd favorite from day one because she is the sharpshooter, gets the feet set. And you said it, the Lucon has shown up today. Uh, some of the uh, guys are here, the Yukon men's team. They're off to Las Vegas for the Sweet 16. 
They would be looking for a fifth national championship. The UConn women looking for a 12th. And it started on the defensive end. The Huskies have held Baylor to just 33% shooting in this second half. And that got the offense rolling. Inbounded. Owens, the senior from Plano, Texas. For the Bears. Bugs foul. Asbury's a grad student. Caitlin Bickle's a grad student. Perhaps in their final night as a Bear. Another 20 win season. The 20th in a row for Baylor. Only UConn has more with 30 amongst the active streets. Four players in double digits tonight for Connecticut, led by AZ Fudd with 22. A 12 rebound performance. For Aubrey Griffin, a 10 assist performance for Nika Mule. Uhaus. And that'll go to the Bears. And some substitutions coming on for both sides. Inesh Betancourt coming in. Ayanna Patterson onto the floor. Erica Porter for Baylor. And Katarina Ferreira as well. Huskies reached the championship game a year ago. Lost to South Carolina, their only defeat in the finals. And their road back continues. A win here would improve to 31-5, uh, and five, the Huskies record. And again, a date awaits with the Buckeyes of Ohio State, Kevin McGuff. Of course, very familiar with Gino Oriana from his days as an assistant at Notre Dame. They were winners earlier today. J.C. Sheldon, who's battled injuries all year long with the buzzer beater to beat North Carolina. And then they'll also have to contend perhaps with Virginia Tech or Tennessee. And the sellout crowd on their feet in Gamble. Seventy-seven, fifty-eight, your final. The two seed UConn advancing over the seven seed Baylor in the Seattle three region. Take a look at tonight's Capital One rewarding performance put in by AZ Fudd. AZ Fudd was huge in the second half for UConn. When things were teetering a little bit, she picked it up. Three-level score showed off in a big way this second half. Read the defense well, was patient, and took what they gave her, slicing through the half-court defense of the Baylor Bears. Our Capital One rewarding performance Guiding Connecticut to a win over Baylor. 77-58 your final for our entire crew. Along with Christy Thomas-Scuddy, I'm Beth Mowens. Thanks for being with us. There's your bracket headed to Seattle 3 as we get you to SportsCenter with SVP.